In this short video, we're going to talk a little bit about the different blower assemblies and blower configurations we can find in gas furnaces. Now, blower assemblies are constructed to pull air through the return air ducts and filter and then push the air through the heat exchanger and the supply ducts. Again, the blower is the point of pressure change on the air side of a gas furnace. Everything on the return side of the blower is going to be a negative pressure. It means it's sort of in a vacuum. It's lower than the surrounding air pressure. On the other side of the blower, where we're pushing it through the heat exchanger and the supply ducts, it's in a positive pressure. So your point of pressure change is the blower. Blowers require careful adjustments to produce enough volume and velocity of the air to remain to maintain comfort in design conditions. Normally, this is all decided by the equipment manufacturers when they create the charts and the tables that allow you to install the proper system. There are two types of blower assemblies available. We have direct drive and we have belt drive. The direct drive has approximately 1050 RPM on high speed, revolutions per minute. The motor is attached by either the blower wheel hub assembly on the shaft or through a spider coupling. The blower, the motor is actually supported by the motor shaft and the blower wheel. The variable speed requires a multi-speed motor. And it's used in residential and light commercial applications. Okay, a spider coupling okay, is just a flexible coupling that allows, if for some reason it seizes up or something like that, it allows the motor to be disconnected. Okay, your motor would be mounted here, your blower wheel would be mounted here, and there's a flexible coupling in here that just helps with vibration. And again, if, if something fails, seizes up, you're not going to burn out a motor. Your other type of blower assembly is called a belt drive. The motor is usually a 1725 RPM. The blower wheel is supported by the shaft and bearings. Its variable speed is obtained by varying the settings of a split pulley. In other words, how tight the belt is. It's more often used on the commercial applications. You don't see a lot of these in residential. Adjustable pulleys look like this, okay? The belt is in the grooves here. You have a little um, hex nut here that you loosen up and you, and you can open up and close up this pulley. If you open it up, it makes the belt looser. The, mo the blower wheel will slow down. If you tighten it up, the belt will be tighter and the blower wheel will speed up. Okay, it's very important again to get your proper airflow and you do this by taking temperatures of both the supply and the return register okay so your return air let's say is 70 degrees return air we come through the blower we come through the heat exchanger okay and you want to take your supply air temperatures not within line of sight of the heat exchanger because we don't want to capture we don't want to get the heat, the infrared heat, right off the heat exchanger. We want to come around a bend or something like that and come into the supply duct. So if we're getting 130 degrees on our supply air, we have a 60 degree temperature rise. Now what you want to do is you want to compare this temperature rise to what the nameplate on the unit says. All gas furnaces will have a nameplate and it will tell you what the temperature rise is. If the temperature rise is too high, you need to increase the airflow. If the temperature rise is too low, you need to decrease the airflow. The reason for this is the longer the air stays in the heat exchanger, the hotter it's going to get. Again, the longer the air stays in the heat exchanger, the hotter it's going to get. So if you increase the speed of the blower, you're going to cool off the air that comes out the supply duct. Now, again, this works only if your duct work is set up for the difference in airflow volume. Don't decrease it too much because you still have to move air across the heat exchanger. So look at the temperature rises. It will tell you a lot about what the airflow is doing. It's one piece of the puzzle, but it will help you out. 
It's important that on belt drive blowers that the drive and the motor on the pulley are perfectly aligned. You can't have any offset because the belt will start wearing. Any belt wear more than normal is often attributed to the improper alignment of the pulley and motor. You don't want to have to go out and replace belts on negative 10 degree days on a roof. More and more we're seeing ESCM and VFD motors. ECM motors are called electronic communicated motors. VFD motors are variable frequency drive motors. These motors modulate by manipulating the frequency supplied to the motor itself. Okay, ECM motors, okay, they have a cap on the end of them. We'll talk more about this that takes and converts the AC current to DC. It has a rectifier inside of it. VFD motors vary the frequency. Today, more and more manufacturers are using ECM and VFD motors. There's an entire, we're going to talk more about those in another video. The speed of the motor is directly linked to the application and the volume demand. It can compensate to a point for air blockages. In other words, the motor is going to speed up and try to overcome air blockages, dirty filters, in, incompatible ductwork. But at the same time, it can actually try to speed up too much and it can cause some pretty high power bills and put a lot of wear on the equipment if things are not proper. VFD motors, okay, is a variable frequency drive. Remember what determines the speed of an electric motor. It's the frequency of the motor and the number of fields. Think about the formula. RPM is frequency times 120 divided by the number of poles. If you drop the frequency, you can slow down the motor. For example, a 1050 RPM motor running at 30 hertz instead of 60 hertz spins approximately 600 RPMs. If you drop the speed, you drop the volume of air delivered. It's a little bit different with ECM motors. The motor speed is controlled by inverting the voltage from AC to DC and then sent to the motor at the amount needed for whatever speed is needed. Okay, with DC motors, we can actually very easily vary, vary the speed of the motor by decreasing the voltage that is going to the motor. So that's just a little bit about the different blower motors that are available. Again, you're going to be seeing more and more ECM motors and they bring a whole new breed of troubleshooting that's required. So we're going to talk more about those.